Welcome back guys, RSX all wheel drive episode number two. Uh, one thing I should address and I didn't do a good job last episode was that my good friends Jay and Tyler are the guys that are doing all of this work. I'm hardly doing anything. I've done all the research and planning and collecting all the parts, but they are the ones doing all the legwork on this project. I honestly just don't have the time to do it uh, between all the tuning that I'm doing and my other projects. So I know you guys wanna see this. So this is, I figured will be the best way to get this project done as quickly as possible. So Jay is one of my oldest friends. He owns APS here in Mississauga and I twisted his arm. He is, he finally agreed to do this work for me and I, I'm really appreciative of it. So um, if you guys need work done and you're in Mississauga, definitely check him out. He, they can do almost anything. Uh, do me a favor though, don't contact him and ask how much it's gonna cost to do an all wheel drive conversion because this is something that he's doing as a favor for me. And not that he won't do it for you, I'm sure he would. If you brought all the bits and pieces and were 100% ready to go, he would do it for you. But uh, that's not what they would normally want to take on. Anyways, um, and, and oh, I should mention, this is his S10. It is a uh, six liter swap V8. We are gonna be having it on the channel soon. It's, I'm gonna be tuning it with HP Tuner and it should put down some, some big numbers. But uh, so if you're interested in this, stay tuned. But for now, it is time to head in and see how we are progressing with the all wheel drive swap. All right, guys, uh, big change of plans. Obviously, the car's still going all-wheel drive, but we decided to just forget about trying to keep it NA, and we've started installing a turbo kit. Um, this is what, ultimately, this was the plan always, to turbocharge this car, and I don't know why I really thought I would keep it NA. It was maybe silly, I don't know. But we have started installing the turbo kit for this car. I think it just makes so much more sense just to go turbo right off the bat. So, that being said, it has complicated a lot of things uh, and we are going to try to go through and cover as much as possible about the, installing the turbo kit as well as all the stuff required to convert this RSX to all-wheel drive. And one of the things I guess I didn't mention last time because we have a lot of new subscribers is this is my 2006 RSX Type S. Uh, I bought it a while ago. It had the original K20 Z1 in it. And then I swapped in a K24A2 out of a 2006 RSX Type S. I did a dyno comparison video of that, so maybe I'll link it up in the description if you wanna check that out. Okay, that I guess covers the car uh, for anyone that's new, but uh, before I get into all the details of the turbo kit, I do want to take this chance to mention one thing about the transmission. Because this transmission is a hybrid of a CRV all-wheel drive transmission and a ninth gen case, um, I had to do something special about the shifter arrangement. This is an RSX, it has an RSX shift box, it has RSX cables, and it has RSX shift selector. In order to make that work, we are lucky enough that K-Tune makes a bracket adapter to hold the, the shift cables. This bracket adapter allows you to run all the RSX stuff, basically run a ninth gen transmission in an RSX. This has made life a lot simpler and I'm I have to give them a huge thanks that they make this and they've, they've helped me out with it. That pretty much sums it up for the transmission. We'll go into more detail about the transmission once we start hooking up the all-wheel drive system, but that pretty much sums it up for the front end. Um, for now, I'm gonna touch upon the turbo setup a little bit. This is a PLM Sidewinder turbo kit. I have added a infamous Boosted Boys GTX 3582 ball bearing turbo. I wanna see how it's gonna perform on this. These turbos, I've tuned a bunch of them. They perform well. They are super inexpensive um, and it's a good starting turbo. I think we'll outgrow this one eventually and I have a, another turbo that I'll probably put on it eventually, but for now, this is gonna be a good starting point. Um, additionally to this, the plan is I have to swap out these RDX injectors. I did a video a while ago about RDX injectors versus stock ones. Uh, maybe I'll link it up in the description if you guys wanna check that out. But I, it's time to pull out these RDX injectors and I have a set of 1000cc injectors that I got from my friend Stefan at Performance Fuel Injection. I get all my injectors from him. He's super fast. They work really well and they're a really good deal. I'll link his, uh, his site in the description. If anyone wants injectors, definitely check him out. Um, that being said, I have to give a huge thanks out to K-Tune. They've helped me out a lot with this project. They've hooked me up with a bunch of different pieces to make my life easier. They've provided their coolant adapter housing 
and also a power steering line kit, which makes routing of the power steering much better. It, before it came up through here and it was gonna interfere with the turbo manifold, this, this line routing is much better. They provide the, the special fitting to go into the rack and this new fitting that bolts to the uh, power steering. So that has made life a lot easier. Additionally, they have made my life a lot easier with all of their fittings, their AN fittings. Huge thanks to K-Tune for helping me out with this stuff. They uh, hooked me up with a fuel rail and pressure gauge kit, along with some dash 10 lines and all the AN fittings. And also I'm gonna be using their, I'm also gonna be using their newer, uh, I think it's like a Teflon type line kit to run the fuel lines and also the oil feed line. And so I have all the fittings for that. I have to measure the lines and then uh, I'll show you all about that stuff when we actually get to making it. Um, so that's just a quick overview of the turbo bits and pieces, some plumbing stuff. I'll get more into it as we get deeper into the turbo kit. Today is gonna be all about diving into the rear end of this car. We have, to we have to drop the tank, drop the rear suspension and start installing the rear all wheel drive components. So let's get this up in the air and start getting into that. Okay, so with the uh, car up in the air, I can go through a bit more of the details of taking care of the rear end, but for now, I'll show you, we have the uh, transfer case bolted up, and as you can see, we're gonna have to make the custom drive shaft that goes through here. We're gonna have to take care of this piece. This has to be cut out and, and modified. And then the one of the big issues with converting RSXs to all-wheel drive is this tunnel area. It disappears. The, uh, the tunnel is the normal height here, and then it disappears at this point, which is about where your the rear passenger feet go. So I have to cut this area and lift it up to give clearance for the drive shaft that's gonna be coming through here. And one of the big obstacles and the part that I'm not sure how we're gonna deal with just yet, I have a few ideas where we're gonna have to test it out. But uh, the big thing is we have to remove this gas tank and find a new solution for a gas tank. Um, the, issue is, the issue is that this gas tank does not fit with a diff. The diff is basically gonna go here and the gas tank just won't work. So we're gonna remove the gas tank and install the diff, get everything sorted out, install the drive shafts. And then once that's all done, then I'm gonna figure out what I can use for a gas tank. Whether it be a fuel cell that goes in the back or what I'm really hoping is that I can find a OEM gas tank from a rear wheel drive car that will fit in this space. I have a few ideas, but we'll have to just do all this work, get it in place, and then I'm gonna figure out if I can make a, an OEM style gas tank work. But today, uh, Tyler's gonna help me out. We're gonna uh, drop the gas tank. We're gonna start disassembling the rear suspension and start installing all the uh, CRV suspension components to make this all-wheel drive. So I guess we should uh, get started. All right, guys, more progress. Tyler has done a ton of work today and we are getting really close to start putting this all-wheel drive stuff together. Tyler has removed the gas tank, removed all the suspension components, and started to install the rear diff kit. And I have to give a big thanks to Red at Pirate Garage. Uh, I will link his channel in the corner there. He is the one that is credited with creating this rear diff kit. And without this rear diff kit, I wouldn't be able to do this all-wheel drive conversion as easily as I am doing it. He did all the hard work to try to create this. I'm gonna show more about this kit as we go through and go to finally install the, uh, the actual diff. But big thanks to Red for creating this. It's made our life a lot easier and uh, very happy that I was able to get one from him. That being said, we are at the point where we're choosing the suspension components to start putting back in so that we can put the suspension components in, mount the diff, and then install the drive shafts. And apparently, once we've put the suspension together, got the diff in, we will be using two CRV drive shafts. There's a long version and a short version of the drive shafts, and apparently you have to use two short drive shafts for this. I have all that stuff. It's gonna be in the next video, I think, when we actually mount the diff and do the drive shafts, but in this video, we're gonna focus on the suspension parts. And so this is, this is the, the big question, which trailing arm to use? This is a RSX trailing arm, this is a CRV trailing arm, and the reason I thought I might want to try to use this, the RSX trailing arm is because I'll be able to easily retain a sway bar. Because uh, this is going to be a track car, I want to be able to retain a sway bar. 
The issue is it's not gonna work. And the reason why is there is a difference between how these these mounting tabs line up to bolt up the spindle because the spindle goes here. The front ones line up great. The rear ones are slightly offset. Now we could probably pry them a little bit and we may try that, but that seems kind of ghetto. So I think the best course of action would be to just use the, uh, the CRV ones. We are gonna clean these up, um, do new bushings and then install them with new spindles. So trailing arms aside, we still have to sort out every, all the intricacies of dealing with the rear spindles. So on this side, this is all CRV stuff. On this side, it's all RSX stuff. And obviously I need to use the CRV spindle because of the all wheel drive. The issue with that is I don't want to use the CRV parking brake mechanism, which would normally be a drum mechanism inside of here. Um, so the plan is to try to use the RSX caliper, which has a parking brake mechanism that you grabs onto the actual disc. The issue with doing that is I have to switch the caliper and I'm hoping this is going to work because I can't, I can't transfer the RSX caliper bracket onto the CRV spindle because it doesn't line up. So we have to use the CRV caliper bracket, which does line up. And from my understanding, it should work. Um, I believe what we have to do is use a CRV style rotor, this caliper bracket, and then the RSX caliper. We are going to test all of that out tomorrow. So uh, that is about it for today. I am going to, I'll be back tomorrow and we're going to start putting all this stuff together and hopefully it all works, but I will definitely let you guys know how it all goes. So anyways, that's about it for today. And uh, thanks for watching guys. Bye now.